This is the On All Cylinders Podcast. Powered by Summit Racing. Your host for today is Summit Racing's Paul Sokolis with special guest Eric Ross from Red Arc Electronics. Here we go. Hi there and welcome to another edition of the On All Cylinders Podcast. I am your host for today, Paul Sokolis, and uh, we've got a good topic to discuss. We're going to be talking about vehicle auxiliary power systems, specifically for like a, a car camping or an overlanding rig or... Say you're a contractor and want to build a remote job site, or even if you just want to have a really, really good tailgate party. You know, the technology exists nowadays where you can turn your vehicle into sort of like a mobile power supply. And to tell us all about how that's possible is Eric Ross from Red Arc Electronics. He knows an awful lot about this topic. Eric, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank you, man. Pleasure to be here. I appreciate you taking the time. You want to start off with uh, just a quick introduction and let us know how you got uh, started with Red Arc? Sure. Yeah, I've been... uh... I've been with uh, Red Arc for about, oh, oh just over a year now. Um, I am the sales manager for the East Coast, so I cover everything from Florida up to Maine, over to Texas, and up to North Dakota. So uh, a lot of a lot of ground covered there, and and if you're lucky, you might see the uh, Red Arc uh, Toyota Tacoma out on the freeway because I'm usually uh, making my rounds. You know, I started uh, you know in the military. I was in the Air Force for 21 years. Um, I started as an aircraft mechanic. And then I became a flight engineer on the E3 AWACS, which is has just a huge electronic suite on it. Um, really uh, in depth, you know, as far as electronics goes, for sure. So, you know, I've always kind of had a love for that. After that, you know, I, I retired from the military and I went over to one of the uh, largest uh, aftermarket distributors in the country and was a sales manager for them for a while, did some road sales for a while. Um, and that's where I've got kind of introduced to Red Arc um, through the distribution side and, and really fell in love with the product. You know, Red Arc's been doing this since 1979. So over 40 years of vehicle electronics and they got started with vehicle ignition systems. And these early systems uh, would create a Red Arc. And uh, that's kind of where the name derived from. Um, you know, from there, they've grown into a, just a world-class electronics manufacturer top-notch production facility in Australia. It's just a beautiful facility. Almost all of our products are produced there and then shipped out worldwide. So considering we're talking all about auxiliary vehicle power systems today, it looks like we've got the right person on the show. So yeah, let's start at square one. Someone wants to build uh, an auxiliary vehicle power system with an extra battery to supply power to, say, a job site or an overlanding rig. What's their first step? What, uh, What do they need to do to get started? And what do they need to know? So, you know, for someone kind of just getting into this, I always kind of use the analogy of think about, you know, the old days when we'd go to a drive-in movie and we'd park our car, we'd dial the radio to a certain frequency and we would listen, you know, through our radio watching the movie. In the back of your head, the whole time you're thinking, is my car going to start when this is said and done? And I've been, all right, it's intermission. I'm going to start, charge the battery a little bit. So that's the thought process going into this is you want to keep, your accessories separate from your vehicle start battery. You want to isolate that battery, but still be able to charge those. So you get into, um, you know, adding a second battery that's going to operate on its own that you can, you can cycle that battery down and and it's not going to touch your start battery. So we're talking battery isolators, um, battery chargers to properly charge that battery. And then if you want to start getting into solar power and things like that, it's a great way to keep those topped off when you're at a campsite or you're at the construction site or the opportunities of the stuff are endless. Um, you know, one example I like to use is think of a realtor. They have cameras that need to be charged and a lot of them use drones and things like that. And they're out on the road all day. They need to power these accessories up while not making their vehicle, uh, you know, uh, unreliable. Well, let me ask you this then. I'm kind of an old car guy, so I'm familiar with those alternators that barely made enough juice to power like the AM, FM, Delco. But you're saying even nowadays, modern cars with all their extra electronic accessories and fancy charging systems, it's still not as simple as just connecting up another battery? Well, there's a couple different factors you want to think about um, when you're doing this. As we add these second batteries, um, we pay a lot of money for them. They're not cheap. It's not your it's not your typical lead acid battery that you use for your start battery. Um, we want to take care of this battery and and we want it to be as efficient as possible. So your alternator doesn't really provide the proper charge for charging a battery that's been cycled all the way down. It's really made to keep your start battery topped off, recharged after a start, and then to power the accessories in your in your vehicle that come with your vehicle. When you add this second battery, 
it has to be charged properly. You need a proper three stage charge. You need uh, boost, absorption, and float mode to properly charge a battery the way it's supposed to be charged. Your alternator doesn't provide that. It's just kind of throwing current out there. So adding a DC to DC charger is gonna make your system a lot more efficient by keeping that battery charged properly with a three-stage charge. A lot of these um, vehicles, you don't have space under the hood for adding a second battery. You're putting it in the back, or if you're building a system in a tow behind camper or something like that, the charge for your battery is still coming from the alternator going through this battery charger. You wanna keep as efficient as possible. So you mount that battery charger back in the back because you're gonna get voltage drop from a long run of wire. So these battery chargers help also compensate for that voltage drop. And then another thing we don't think a lot about, um, newer vehicles from the mid 2000s on have variable voltage alternators. These alternators are going to reduce their current output as your start battery gets fully charged in order to reduce the load and it's, it's good for fuel efficiency, things like that. These DC to DC battery chargers integrated into the system are now gonna sense that and it's gonna bolt that, bolt that voltage back up to meet that charge profile that you need for that battery. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, and you've touched on this a little bit already, but can you mention a couple things that folks should keep in mind uh, when kind of like mentally compiling a, a blueprint of what this system will look like? So one thing I always tell people, we're going to talk about a lot of different components, but as we talk, um, talk about them, there's one component that's theoretical, and, and that's efficiency. Think of efficiency as one of your components. So as you're building this, you want everything as efficient as possible. So that comes with your DC to DC charger. It's proper efficient charging to that battery. You want a battery isolator. You want something that's going to allow you to charge from your start battery to your second battery, but make sure that you don't pull anything off of your start battery. So as you cycle your additional battery, you're not touching that start battery. You can get into solar, um, which is great for camping and tailgating and things like that to keep your power topped off when the vehicle is not running. So adding a solar panel and a solar regulator are, are key components um, for a lot of the campers and, and it's becoming hugely popular right now. Also, you wanna think about um, wires, switches, fuses, things like that. We recommend fusing after the start battery and before the battery charger and then fusing after the auxiliary battle, battery before your loads. And then you want some kind of bus, some kind of distribution. So coming off your extra battery, I want a pathway that's gonna to go to all my accessories. And then, um, you know, you can, get, you can get more involved into upgraded alternators, things like that. Generally, you're not going to need to. Um, we like to say, you know, figure out what the amperage output of your alternator is. Generally, 50% of that is gonna be acceptable for the amperage pool of your charger. Well, and that's interesting because you bring up calculations my mind immediately begins to think about how do I figure out how much power is my campsite, my job site, my tailgate party using, and ultimately how much power do I need? Do you have any tips or techniques on how to uh, benchmark that? Sure. And, you know, anytime I'm, I'm talking to a potential customer or an existing customer and we talk about, you know, how do I build this system? I like to work backwards. And you start with all of the accessories you're going to use. So when you're planning out your system, you got two, two frames of thought here. What do I need and what do I want? I encourage people to base their system off what they want. It's easy to make an expansionable system that you can add to later down the road. So I start thinking about, you know, one of the most basic systems is I want to run a refrigerator and I want to run a couple LED lights. That's great. It's simple, but what are you going to do down the road? Do I want to run an air compressor because I decided I like an air mattress to sleep on and I want to be able to blow it up? all the way up to, you know, there's people running small water pumps, things like that. So they have outdoor showers, they can run the water up to the shower, water heating, things like that. There's, you want to think of everything you want to do and then kind of, you want to figure out the amperage of, of each of these things and what the total amperage pull is. And that's going to help you determine the size battery you need based on amp hours of the battery's output. Probably now's a good time to point out that uh, redarcelectronics.com has a couple of really handy calculators that will, you know, give you a good idea of where to get started with all this, right? Yeah, so uh, redarcelectronics.com. Um, there's a couple really cool tools on there. So we have what we call the dual battery calculator. It's going to ask you a couple simple questions and help you determine um, which battery management or, or um, battery charger is going to be best for your use. We also have 
what we call the lifestyle selector tool. Now this is gonna be more in depth. It's gonna ask you, what are you doing? Are you camping? Are you hunting? Are you tailgating? Are you a contractor? It's gonna ask you um, a, a list of, of exactly what you wanna use. Um, I'm gonna be using battery chargers for my drill. I'm gonna be using my laptop computer. And then let's not forget here, so important thing to point out is this isn't limited to DC power. You can add an inverter to the system. And now we're talking AC power. We like to bring a small pressure cooker with us when we camp and we just plug it into the inverter and make street tacos and chili or whatever. So the options, you know, are, are unlimited for what you want to do as long as you've got the power to, to uh, power those things. Now, I want to point out something that I found kind of interesting as I was poking around your website. I found several mentions of marine applications. And I never really thought about that. Do you get a lot of requests for people building supplemental power systems for their boats? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I get the most questions um, about sailboats. And, you know, you think about a sailboat as the model of efficiency. And they're using a lot of batteries in there. And we've got, um, we've got charging capability for those batteries. Um, they're using large lithium banks, things like that. Um, so, you know, we've got the product line to help support that too. And, you know, it, it's something that a lot of people just, you know, don't think about is, you know, how can I, how can I better power my, my boat, you know, when I'm out, let's say I, I parked on the out, out by the sandbar and I'm going to crank the radio for a couple hours, adding a dual battery system to even a, a pontoon boat or something like that gives you tons of uh, opportunities that you can kind of build off from there. Okay, but beyond boats, though, just talking specific applications, is it fair to say that most of this stuff is universal, as in uh, it's not designed for a particular vehicle, make, or model? Most of our stuff's going to be um, universal. So you can set this up. So I'm running a dual battery system in my truck, and I want to power my fridge and a couple lights. Um, all the way up to I have a fifth wheel that I'm pulling behind me, and I want to completely redo the system. You can integrate uh, Red Arc's Red Vision Manager 30 system into that. So now you have full control of your system. You've got your battery charger, you've got your solar input, and you have your screen for control. Um, you can switch the screen. You can switch all your lights on and off through the screen. Um, our Red Vision system is basically like an interactive bus where it's going to allow your switching capabilities through our screen. And the great part, you can also Bluetooth that to your phone. So now you've got your phone to completely manage your system. And think about, you know, you're just running, you know, you're in a, a, a small overlanding vehicle and you have uh, your rooftop tent on it and it's nighttime and you're trying to back into a spot. You can flip the app up on your phone and say, okay, I want to turn all my back LEDs on so I can see what's going on. You don't have to stop, get out, flip the switches on and off. You have all that right at the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's got to be pretty handy, especially like navigating a crowded campsite. But uh, let's change topics just for a bit, because uh, I want to talk about batteries. It seems like you're mentioning batteries an awful lot. So let's really delve into that topic, because um, all batteries aren't created equal. There's, there's several different types. Can you give us a quick, like, 101-style course on, on vehicle and auxiliary batteries? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's your average everyday lead-acid battery that uses our, is our start battery in the vehicle. That's really not made for deep cycling. It's not made for running a bunch of things off of it and, and lowering it down. We start getting into uh, gel batteries and AGM, which stands for absorbent glass mat. These type of batteries are more designed for a deep cycle and running multiple deep cycles. Batteries degrade over time. And the more you cycle these batteries, you're going to kind of use the, the, the life out of it. Um, kind of like every time I, I eat a Big Mac, I'm taking a few uh, days off of my life. It's the same thing with your battery. You know, you start wearing this thing down after a while. The gel and AGM are great. Um, they're, they're cost effective for this type of thing. But where, the, where, where your money's at is with lithium batteries. And, and that's, you know, the best technology we have at right, out, right now. These are made for deep cycling they have a longer life, they charge faster, which we go back to one of our key components in a system is efficiency. You want it to charge fast and you want it to hold as much power as you can. They're also lighter. Um, so you're not adding, as you add a larger bank, you're not adding a ton of weight to your vehicle. And a lot of these newer lithium batteries even have built-in heater mechanisms in there. So lithium batteries don't like to work in the cold weather and they'll have an internal heater that'll use its own power to heat that battery up to an acceptable temperature to accept a charge. So all this talk about batteries immediately makes me start to think about battery levels and charge levels. Say I'm out at my campsite or out at my tailgate party. 
how do I monitor that battery to ensure that uh, it's it's doing all right? And to kind of tell myself, you know, at this current consumption rate, I've only got X amount of hours left. What is uh, what is a good solution for that? Sure. There's a, there's a lot of different options. And, and, and it's important because it's like a fuel gauge. You know, you want to know how much you've got left. And also being able to monitor your system is going to help with system efficiency because you're going to be able to see what what loads are the highest when I turn this and this on, you know, what's what's the result. And then, you know, I like to use the monitoring as well for when you're using solar. If you have a portable solar panel or something you can move around, you want it to be as efficient as possible and getting the most amperage out of it. So as you move it around, you can monitor the input of these uh, solar blankets or solar panels to see what's the best spot in the sun. Um, you know, our, our basic, uh, what we call the BC to DC charger, it stands for battery charger, or direct current. They don't come with a gauge or anything like that. We have a great gauge line that you can add into the system to be able to monitor that. And then our more advanced um, systems, our battery management systems, our manager 30 and our red vision systems, they come with a screen that's it's amazing. It'll, it'll tell you exactly what percentage your battery's at. It'll tell you how many days, how many hours you've got left with your current charge rate. And you can also see what's happening with the system. How much solar do I have coming in right now? How much, you know, coming off the alternators coming in right now? Where is it going and how is it affecting my system? You know, that's interesting. I never really thought about it uh, specifically in the solar context as like a, a real-time feedback mechanism for how well your solar panel system is working. And I imagine being able to get that real-time feedback on on how much power you're using and how much time you have left has got to be pretty darn valuable as well. Yeah, exactly. It's it's an invaluable tool to have to see what's happening with your system and and how much power you got left. Especially, you know, what, one thing we don't think a lot about. So we we always kind of think of these things as luxury items and 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 glamping and and I'm adding you know some cool stuff that I wouldn't have had you know from my off grid experience. But there's also a safety feature here, too. You're thinking about if you're in a situation where you need power, you need to be able to keep your radios charged up because you might be in a search and rescue situation. Uh, you might have an emergency. You want to be able to have this power ready to go and available to you at all times. So being able to see how much I've got left is critical in kind of helping you through an emergency situation or something like that. We're heading towards an interesting dovetail. It's a topic that that I wanted to get to eventually, and now seems like a logical time. Speaking of safety, I'm thinking about uh, installation in particular. Um, anybody that's worked around electronic systems knows that there is a, a possibility that, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, things can go awry. So uh, what does someone need from like a skill and competencies perspective to install one of these supplemental power systems? Sure, yeah, your, your system's only as good as the installation, you know, obviously. If you're comfortable with, you know, basic electrical knowledge, red is positive, black is negative, and you can read a schematic, you can do one of these systems safely on your own. As long as you're properly fusing things to protect downstream and, and also if something shorts downstream, protecting everything upstream, if you're properly fusing everything, it's, it's completely safe and it is something you can do on your own. But there are lots of installers out there uh, that can help someone through these more intense builds and, and Red Arc's more than happy to kind of connect an end user with an installer to help make that process easier, as well as our customer support team. If you have a question or something like that, um, I've, I've even seen, you know, if, if we didn't already have a schematic made for something that somebody's trying to build, I've seen some of our, of our technicians will draw out on a piece of leaf paper, a schematic, take a picture and send it to you saying, you know, here's something to get you started. I'll get you something. Uh, I'll get you something more in depth later, but here's what we're talking about. Um, it's just, you know, top notch customer service uh, on Red Arcs end to kind of help the help the customer through this uh, if they're doing the build on their own. All right, let's let's get off in the left field because um, you're kind of making me think about the phone calls and emails you folks are getting. Can you talk about some some crazy or some wacky or some some out of this world kind of projects that you've been involved with? Yeah, listen, if you if you go to YouTube and, and you YouTube Red Arc, there is some really, really amazing builds out there, especially the Australians. Um, you know, doing, spending a lot of time in the outback and things like that. Um, they really have a different mindset to the, to the overlanding off grid. Um, you know, that it's growing here in the U S and, 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 and we're getting, we're getting smarter on it, but some of these videos that the Australians put together, it, it's just amazing. And, and it really gives you some great ideas on where you can go and, and, you know, with your system and the different things you can do. 
All right. So you said just go to YouTube and like keyword search on Red Arc. And for the folks uh, at home, it's R E D A R C. Yeah, you, um, there, there's several different brand ambassadors we have. You could just do a simple search for you uh, for Red Arc, and, and you'll find some pretty amazing stuff. One of one of the ones that that I love to point out is that there's a gentleman out there who built a, a an overlanding rig, and in the back of his in the back of his canopy, he had a kegerator in there. And and with with our uh, Manager Thirty and Red Vision system connected to this. He could now monitor from his gauge the contents of his keg, how much how much he's got left in there, the current temperature of it, and keep everything powered all in one. It, it, it's just an amazing setup the guy went through. Just a lot of ingenuity, you know, can be used uh, with these different types of systems. And that might be a potentially untapped pun, definitely intended there. An untapped market for Red Arc. You get in on the tailgate party scene. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's one of the things I tell a lot of people is is, you know, once you throw an inverter in here and now you have AC power, you've got the ultimate tailgating machine. You know, you can have a TV, you got the beers cold, um, you know, it's it, it's a great setup and you don't have to worry about when you get back to the vehicle after not being able to start it up, you're, you're good to go. Okay, so let's explore that topic just very quickly um, for like a tailgate party or even, uh, you know, like a single day job site. Are something like those solar panels easy to set up and take down? Yeah, it's great. Um, our, our our small folding panels they'll they'll they fold down to a size you could fit behind the seat. You pull it out, you undo it on your hood or on your top of your rig, uh, across the windshield, on the ground, um, wherever. It's just a simple plug in, and and we we recommend like a um, an Anderson type connector to plug that thing in. It's just a quick disconnect. You plug that thing in and it's going straight to your to your battery charger, whether it be our BCDC or our um, Manager 30 system. Um, that's one of the great things. You know, we, we didn't talk about this earlier, but um, when we talked about all the different types of components you need in our system, Red Arc bundles those into their unit. So our basic uh, BC to DC charger, it's a DC to DC charger in 25 amp, 40 amp or 50 amp. It's got a built-in battery isolator, so you're protecting that battery, and it's got an MPPT solar controller in it. This is all in one unit, and it makes installation incredibly easy. It's almost a set-it-and-forget-it type system. Oh, and you know, that's something else I wanted to bring up very briefly. You alluded to uh, Red Arc's product mix, and as I was popping around the website, I noticed that uh, Red Arc's got brake controllers. Which is surprising because I thought you guys were strictly in the uh, 12 volt power system game. Yeah, I think by far my favorite product that we make is is our towing brake controller. The Tow Pro Liberty and the Tow Pro Elite are are just amazing units. And, and and if you're listening to this and you haven't seen one, go to Google, put in Tow Pro Elite, and just take a look at some of the pictures that come up of the installation. So this is a factory installation looking brake controller. So you don't have that knee knocker that's down on your on your knee knee panel under the uh, steering wheel there. And, and let's not forget, newer vehicles have an airbag underneath that panel as well too. And you, you don't want to mount a projectile to that. So this, this brake controller eliminates that knee knocker. The main piece of it will mount up under the dashboard. And then through the dash, you'll just have a small knob. So that's your gain control. And then push button is your emergency override or sway control. So instead of, you know, you're going, you're on the freeway and that semi blows by you and your trailer starts going back and forth. That's a scary situation. With the Red Arc Tow Pro, you just hit the button and it sends a quick signal back to the trailer only. And it straightens that trailer back out and gets it back behind you. Um, amazing safety feature there. These brake controllers, they're, they're self-calibrating and um, that, that makes things super easy for you. And with the Tow Pro Elite, this is the only brake controller that's designed for off-road towing. And, and that's huge. So your, your everyday brake controller has, it's a proportional brake controller. It's got an accelerometer inside and it's going to apply braking based on your rate of deceleration. And that's always going to be the case with a proportional brake controller. With the Tow Pro Elite, you can turn off that accelerometer. So instead of your rate of braking being determined by your deceleration rate, now it's whatever you turn the knob to. So if I turn the knob to zero, I've got no trailer brake, which is awesome if you're towing off-road sand and mud because you don't want to create an anchor. Every time you hit the brakes and your trailer brakes, it wants to dig in. And then, you know, conversely, I can turn it all the way up to 10. So if I'm going down downhill, a tight switchback on a rocky road, something like that, if I just tap my brake, I've got full trailer brake back there. 
And if I put it at five, I got 50% braking. So I have more control over my trailer now to kind of help me through those tough situations. Okay, so let's circle back to uh, the power systems because we've been talking about them for well over 20 minutes now and covered a ton of topics. But I kind of want to circle back to that kind of square one hypothetical we talked about earlier. That person who's interested in building an auxiliary power system for their overlander or their job site or for their tailgate or for whatever. Is there anything we haven't talked about that it is imperative for them to know before they uh, begin designing and developing their system? Sure. You know, you know, one of the biggest things, and we talked about it before, is, is you know, you just have to sit back and think, what do I want to power? Not what do I need to power? What do I want to power? You know, so, you're, so you can expand later on down the road and, and, and add things that, that you need. But anything that needs 12 volt power or, or like we said, 110 power as well. We have several of our systems will actually accept short power. So you could plug 110 in and now charge your 12 volt batteries that way as well. Um, so that's a neat function to have if, you know, hey, you're at a campsite that already has a power hookup. Hey, plug in. Um, but yeah, you can, if you have enough battery power, you can run an air conditioner for, for four to six hours if you need to. Another thing I like to point out to people that they might not think of, you know, you plan this, this great cramping trip and, and you're out there and you're getting ready to cook dinner and it's pouring down rain, you know, good, good luck getting the grill going and, and, and keeping the, the steaks fresh while it's pouring rain. Well, now you have another option. You can plug a crock pot in if you want to and, and, and cook a different way. So, you know, it's just kind of opening your mind and thinking, okay, you know, what can I do with this auxiliary power? How will it best suit my needs? And, you know, like you said, the, the contractors, I got to keep drills and, and saws and things like that charged up. Um, the realtor we talked about, you know, I've got cameras and, and, and drones and things like that all the way down to the tailgater. I want to, I want to keep my drinks cold. I, I want to be able to watch TV and play the radio and have fun out in the parking lot. So the op, the, the, the opportunities are, are endless. Um, it's just what, whatever you can think of, uh, we can definitely find a way uh, to power that. So do you want to offer any closing thoughts on vehicle auxiliary power systems? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the big things, um, you know, with the Red Arc products is, is, is these products were designed in Australia for the Outback. So they are meant for harsh conditions. They are meant to take some abuse. They're meant to be um, you, you can mount, you know, our battery chargers under the hood or, or, or in my Tacoma, it's mounted right behind the grill. So it's getting snow and rain and everything on it all day. Um, and it keeps on ticking because, you know, like we said, there's a lot of luxury items available here, but there's also a safety factor as well. And, you know, when you're stranded and you're out in the woods and your truck's stuck, nobody's coming to get you. So you want to be able to be self-sustained as much as possible for as long as possible. And, and that's the main thing that Red Arc is trying to do, help you stay out longer, help you stay off of the grid and be able to enjoy your, your outing and not have to worry about um, you know, your, your vehicle not starting or um, not having the battery power required to do what you need to do. Do what you need to do and stay out there longer. And, you know, when you said that, I first thought, well, yeah, you know, enjoy your enjoy your off grid camping. But then, you know, if you think about that in a job site context, being able to recharge your tool batteries, that's significantly increased productivity. So, yeah, all good reasons to run an auxiliary power system on your vehicle. Um, and with that, I think that's a pretty good note to end on. Um, we've been talking with Eric Ross from Red Arc Electronics. Eric, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Awesome, brother. I appreciate it, man. I really, uh, really thank you for uh, giving, you know, Red Arc this opportunity to get some airtime, man. We, we really appreciate it. Hey, we never miss an opportunity to learn new stuff. So, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us and uh, have a good one. We'll see ya. This has been the On All Cylinders podcast. Powered by Summit Racing. Check out new episodes coming soon at onallcylinders.com. Onallcylinders.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time.